friends and welcome back to the Heavenly Homestead. If you've been breeding for a while, you probably have been breeding a lot or more heavily for spring babies. A lot of people do because, you know, spring, summer, it's the time that the big shows are on and you need your goats with an udder to have better chances of winning. So what that means is that you'll have a more saturated market of little baby goats. How can you stand out when there's a million other breeders around you. Today I want to cover the basic things, like the good impression. What will make you stand out when people come to visit your farm? And I do have a strategy. I do have certain things that I do every time somebody's gonna come and visit. And I'm just gonna run you around the goat yard and I'm gonna show you the things that I do, when I do them and why. Uh, to me, it, the first impression when somebody comes over is not only as far as my goats, how friendly they are, how good they look, how healthy they look, how healthy they are, but also it's about the experience. You have to have somebody to come, sit with your goats, pet them, get the whole idea of what it's really like to have goats in your yard, in your homestead, in your farm. Whatever you're going to do, you have to get that very first experience. And I feel like that very first experience comes before you get your baby goat. When you go meet them, how do you meet them? Where do I make people go to meet these babies? Um, you know, all of those things that are simple tips and tricks and things that have worked for me in um, being able not only to sell the baby goats, uh, sell them at the price that I'm asking for, but also do it in a timely manner without having to go down in my price because I want to get rid of an animal that it's on my feed bill and I'm not gonna be using for breeding purposes. So there's a lot of things that I keep in mind and these are more of housekeeping things. So stay tuned for a next video or in this series where I'm gonna talk about the whole experience, the personal experience with somebody when they come over, what you should share, what you should talk about. But this is more of the basis. And what is that first impression? What are these people going to be looking at and how you can create this atmosphere that makes them want to come back not only to come and pet these baby goats but they want to come back they want to have this in their own homes so you're selling not a goat but you're selling the experience and then they want their baby goats so bad that they just can't wait to have their little oasis at home so I hope that all these tips are going to help you, so let's get started. But you know, one of the things I like to do is make sure that this area is taken care of. But you know, I don't have the things how I want them, but I want them to be clean and organized and somewhat in, in an easier way to deal with things like if I need to trim hooves, if I need to do something to one of the kids that they're gonna take, if they have questions, I know where everything is. I know that, you know, even if it's not here, I know exactly where the home is for that. And it helps to not only have a more smooth process but also for me you know to try to make it faster and if they're gonna stay you know some extra time make it about loving to be at your farm loving be with your animals and not that they were waiting for you to find a medicine a shot that you forgot to give um, I don't know, whatever the case may be, something that you have to do last minute. If you have everything organized or you have a home for everything that you need, it's really gonna help you in the long run with the process being smoother. Um, feel a little bit better about the interaction with the potential buyers and at the same time, get things done if they need to be done, if they're gonna take them that same day. Now every time 
that somebody is going to come and check out our goats, I clean the barn. Now, I don't do it because they're coming, but because it accumulates a lot. So if I clean the barn every Friday, meaning I strip everything, I put lime underneath for the smell, and I'm gonna put some clean straw. If I have a customer that is going to come or a potential customer that is going to come, I want to make sure that I am uh, doing the barn either the night before or the morning off that somebody is coming. Uh, again, it's not that the barn is not going to get done that week. It will happen, but I just switched the day when I schedule somebody coming and taking a look at this beautiful babies. Now another one of my pet peeves is uh, spider webs. I don't like it. I don't know if customers or potential customers when they come to pick up their baby goats or to check them out or to check out the, the moms. I don't know if they really look at it but to me it's um, kind of a first impression and something that I would see if I was going somewhere um, and again I may not judge them for it but I would see it so because of that I do vacuum the barn and I make sure that all the cobwebs that really accumulate in about a month uh, during the winter time, they just need to be removed. During the summer time, I don't have this big of a problem. I feel like it's more the winter when it gets a little bit out of control. And it could be also that, you know, sometimes the barn cleaning changes the day just because it's raining, it's yucky outside, and I'm not gonna have the goats sitting outside in the rain so I can clean the their barn. Also, when it's time to clean the barn, if the person is going to come that day, I will put the hay outside and I will close the barn for the day and we'll have them eating from a bag outside, like a hay bag outside. Again, I don't do it just because people are coming, but because it's um, the girls would really make a mess very quickly and they will pee and poop right here by the door because this is where the hay rack is. So yeah, I mean, it's just as far as what I care, the first impression to me is very important. Gaia. I'm telling you, she, look, she opened the gate. She is so naughty. I don't like Frank and Gaia. There's, there's a problem. There's a problem, okay? I don't know what is wrong with you. If you're just hormonal or what your deal is, but you gotta get over it, girlfriend, okay? You got to. As far as their yard, it really doesn't need a lot of work. Um, they spend a lot of time in the back during the summertime because it's a cooler part of their area. And they do get a lot of leaves and stuff like that. The only thing is like, I pick up stuff like this, that they drag it um, just to play on it. And I try to pick up all the sticks and all the things that that actually happens before they kid but if somebody's coming I want to make sure that we don't have a mess that's gonna be a post and that's another post that we need for the milking area so just a little thing but when people come they like to either sit over there in that little hill so I usually have something they can sit on uh, then the babies will come to them and they'll pet them, they'll spend time with them and then in the end they can um, kind of decide if they're undecided which one they want. And this is typically what I use to sit. Uh, I will have a couple of these. These are for gardening purposes. My husband used to use it at work because he would work in semis and stuff like that. So he had bigger squares of this and I just broke them into smaller pieces. Right now 
it was dirty so I put it here so it would get clean with the rain and um, basically I put that on the ground in the hill and people can sit and pet baby goats. Another thing that I did this last spring and this was kind of an afterthought is I brought this bench over here. This is something that I found at a garage so when I went to when my son moved to Utah we were helping him move and stuff and we decided to go garage selling <laughs> and it was so fun we found you know a couple of dog kennels we found this everything super super cheap and I put it by the door now right now because it's winter all I do is try, try to keep the hay out of it I am thinking that I'm going to put something on top of this because I'm afraid that little baby goats they can put their hooves in between and get stuck and hurt themselves I really um, didn't put this before here because of that reason so I'm going to cover it with something and again if they're gonna hurt themselves they can hurt themselves getting you know hope over here or but just to make it safer I'm gonna try to put something that is plastic so I can keep it cleaner better and I can dry it because right now this is soaking wet like I sat on it and my butt is wet so to me having sitting areas when people come to pick their pick up their baby goats or to decide if they even want one it's just really important so they can sit down kind of enjoy the atmosphere the girls and it gives them extra time to get to know them that otherwise if you're just standing around you feel like you you're kind of in a hurry and you have to go now this is something that we added recently if you remember we built this to store hay but then I started using it for milking now when I uh, sold the last babies and I am working on cleaning this because we need more hay I just have alfalfa right now and that's they're having the best time of their lives eating it but this oh and I got the light look at that it's an LED light. I'm super excited. So when I need light, like right now it's sunny, but there's no light that reaches here because we're on the west side. Um, over here, I typically just have the grass hay and I keep the alfalfa in this uh, wheelbarrow. I don't know what it is. It basically has a towable thing over there, but we don't have anything to move around with. So. I use it basically to keep this off the ground because it does go bad faster. In my experience, this alfalfa, it goes bad faster than grass hay if I put it there. So the goats love to go there and pretend that they can reach, but they can't. Anyway, the whole idea of having this organized space is basically knowing where everything is. Some people say, well, it's it's kind of a, you're pretending to be this person or you're pretending to have this or you're pretending that you have systems or you're pretending, not really. Honestly, the idea of me telling you all this is a reminder of why I do the things I do every week or every two weeks or every month. Ultimately, when somebody comes over to pick up a baby goat, it's not gonna be a uh, hurry up and get things clean and done. It's gonna be more like, oh, let me show them why I do what I do and you know how the systems work. Does this mean that everyone should keep their goats this way? No, but this is my video sharing with you my tips and the things that work for me in our state, in our market, in a tiny community of less than 100 people, how um, I'm able to bring people from other counties or from the other side of the county, you know, a couple of hours away from us, why they want to get to our place, why they want to come and check out our goats, what is the difference between my goats and the goats couple miles from us or what's the difference between my goats and the goats that they have in their area 
trust me, Nigerians, Nigerian dwarfs are very popular goats, and in my area, you can find them. But what you do, how you keep them, how you train them, how you love on them, how you actually create systems that they're used to because they love routines, it's gonna, what's going to set you apart. And in the end, all of the tips that I share with you are simple things, in my opinion. Things that really won't take a lot of time if you keep up with it. So I need to be able to sell them, sell them to people that are responsible, sell them to people that will be, a, will be able and willing to pay what I'm asking for. And not only because of their pedigree, but because the way that my goats behave, because of how healthy they are, because of the coaching that I can provide for them, kind of share with them the tips, the things that I've learned, and actually make me stand out when I am against a bunch of people that have been breeders for 20 plus years, that they have uh, good genetics, that they have, you know, they have everything that you think, you know, people would look for. But I am telling you that even if you're brand new with goats, this is your first kidding season, you don't know how you're gonna sell all those babies. You have five, six, seven, eight pregnant goats, you decided to go all in, and now you're wondering, am I gonna be able to sell 20 plus kids? Am I gonna be able to sell 30 plus kids? Um, am I gonna have to give them a really low price because I can't afford to feed them? Well. In my experience, it all comes down to what you offer compared with other people offer. So, if you found this information helpful, please take a minute and leave a comment down below. Share that with me. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And uh, if you want, you can ring the bell so you'll be notified every time there's going to be a new video. And I always try to do a premiere and I sit through the premiere. So if you have any questions, you want to chat with me directly, you can do it as the video is premiering. So you can always be notified by for the premiere and that way we will be all sitting by the computer at the same time and you can ask me whatever questions you have over there. So I hope this is helpful. I'll talk to you guys next time. Now the question is, is this really necessary? You're smiling, Clara. You're smiling. Naughty. Are you hiding from me, Clara? Stop smiling when you're being naughty. I know you. Way too well. Have a great afternoon. Thanks for coming, okay? I said, thanks for coming. That's a cue. You should go away. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. I love you, Clara. Stop smiling.